Good morning, I'm Neva Reti Manu and this is your morning news fix for Tuesday 22nd of October. In this update, 12 young people have spent the night on the roof of an Auckland youth justice facility. One other young person has been brought down. Police were called to the Kotowai Manaki facility in Witi about 6.45 last night. A witness at the scene says the group were tearing off roofing, removing insulation, kicking the building and playing cards, and were demanding five large Big Mac combos and cigarettes. Oranga Tamariki says it's been working with police to resolve the matter and there are no concerns for public safety. The Crown has sunk $500,000 into efforts to find a solution for Ihumatau and are now being told a decision cannot be made. Documents reveal the money has gone toward a contract with the office of the Kingi Tanga and a steering group, tasked with settling a plan for the Auckland land. Political reporter Demelza Jackson has more. A memo from a meeting with the Māori Development Minister in May shows one mana whenua representative is warning the group has reached a stalemate. Minister Tama Portaka has suggested the group be dissolved in response and was advised by officials to consider raising the point again at the next meeting. In a statement, Portaka now says he has confidence in the group and says there have been no discussions on whether it is fit for purpose. Opening statements from the Crown and Defence have been heard in the High Court in Christchurch with evidence set to start in the Jan Feibau murder trial. The 44-year-old real estate agent was stabbed to death in July last year, her body missing until this year. Chinese national 53-year-old Ting Jun Chao is accused. The Crown said Ms Bao was helping him find a house when he assaulted her at a property she'd recommended. It maintains there was a suggestion of a sexual motive. However, Charles lawyer Josh McLeod told the court the evidence is muddy and will erode the Crown's case. The government says it's reduced the risk of low-level offenders being caught up in the three strikes rules. It's lowering the threshold for a first strike warning from 24 months imprisonment to 12 months. It's also activating strike warnings for people who commit any of 42 qualifying offences. Associate Justice Minister Nicole McKee says the new regime allows judges to decide if imposing a strike would be manifestly unjust. We expect that the lowest level offender will still not be captured by the three strikes regime, but those serious offenders will be. Christchurch is struggling to keep up with the growing demand for CBD commercial real estate space. The retail precinct's vacancy rates have hit a historic low, sitting at just 5.7%, compared with 232 back in 2018. Cashel Street's in highest demand, followed by High and Colombo Streets. And in sport, disbelief followed by relief for Peter Hiku in the Kiwis camp for League Pacific Championships. He was threatened with a ban of up to five weeks for checking on a player's welfare during the Super League final. Former White Ferns cricket captain Emily Drum claims a practice series against Australia hinted that a maiden New Zealand women's T20 World Cup triumph could occur. South African Kahiso Rabada has become the 39th bowler to take 300 test wickets. And finally, Arena Sabalenka is the new women's number one tennis player. I'm Neva Reti Manu, and that's your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update at midday from the News Talk ZB Newsroom.